So that's me um, in uh, about Australia Day, uh, winning my 30, 30, well, didn't win my 37th, but that was my 37th marathon. I actually won that one um, up at Mount Tambourine. Um, and um, I only started doing marathons when I was 50 years old. But I think marathons and other activities I've taken on, on board in my life have taught me a lot about determination and I'm trying to get to the essence of that in this presentation today. Okay, so what is determination? A th Cambridge definition is one that I found that, that um, I think I felt most aligned with. Um, it's taking on board something that you find difficult and continuing to do it even though it is difficult. For me, I find my biggest challenge teaching in an all-girls school is trying to confront the um, cultural factors that influence girls away from taking on board STEM-based subjects, particularly physics. And if I reflect upon the numbers, and I've taught in about three different um, girls' schools across my career, um, I was co-ed before that, um, what I found is that in all of them, first of all, girls' schools are doing a better job in convincing girls to do physics and maybe specialist maths and, and math methods. Um, but the other factor I found is that when girls do choose the sciences, there's a heavy bias towards biology. And I was looking through statistics of careers and I couldn't find one for Australia, but I feel that America and Australia are fairly similar in the, in the uh, types of cultural factors that influence us. And I found that um, what I'm seeing in, in um, the choices that girls are making in schools is similar to what I'm seeing in the careers here, that if girls do take on board STEM-based careers, there's um, about three times as many taking on board um, STEM-based careers in biology than there would be in those that are based on physics uh, and, and maths. So physics is the inner circle, inner circle that you can see there um, that's um, like engineering and, and architects. Um, and you can see there's just a much, much smaller group um, taking on board um, physics. Uh, physics as a career compared to the biological sciences. And even there, the numbers taking on board those, um, those career choices is far smaller than what it could be. And as a society, I think we su suffer from a lack of diversity if we don't have a diversity of gender, of gender amongst those. I think a large factor of what we do, or what we do here that might make a difference, is we try to pass on skills of determination. And physics, yes, it is initially a challenging subject, but that shouldn't be a reason not to persist with it. And so that's the message I have for girls out there, to continue to persist doing things that you might find challenging, because ultimately the rewards are greater. So I thought um, I'd talk just a little bit more about determination and then what is it that um, helped me down the path to becoming a, a more determined person. And I see this decision all the time it, um, just outside VPAC here. Um, when people walk into the school, they're confronted with the first choice they have and that is, do I take the stairs or do I take the elevator? And look, it's not, we're not all capable of taking the stairs, but when the choice is there and you can, the, do, do people take the stairs or do they take the elevator? Because I think this is the first step in determination. Even with the small um, choices that we make, if we're always opting for the easier way, perhaps that's not always the best way or what's best for us. So my encouragement to the girls when I see them here is to keep taking the stairs. Um, and I find that there are long-term benefits to this. So by starting with the small choices each day and continuing to sometimes take the harder choice when there are benefits by doing so, that's the habit to build to achieve greater goals further down the track. In my own um, journey, um, I had the fortune to move as a young boy to um, Germany, West Germany at the time in the, in the 70s and um, 
We lived in a town called Fortsheim, which is on the edge of the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald. Um, because I couldn't initially enrol in school, we were still being home tutored at that stage. The activities I had was basically to get out and explore um, tracks in the Black Forest. And so I think that this um, habit that built into a habit of determination started there. And as you can see from this list up here, this built eventually to a list of, um, into, into like developing this habit further into multi-day overnight hikes. And the listing, if I'm, I'm looking in the local area, um, and I've done a number of these a number of times, um, and it's something that I, I think I will continue to do for the rest of my life. So in Queensland, there's a Hinchinbrook Trail, Fraser Island, Great Walk, Morton Island, just walking around the perimeter of it. Um, the, the Scenic Room, which is a, a well-known walk from Coolangatta all the way to Cunningham's Gap and north to Laidley, along the mountains there. Sundown National Park, Gurui National Park, Lamington National Park, Mount Barney, Carnarvon. Um, when you look at other states, um, there's some magnificent places to see, like the Overland Track, the South Coast Track, Southwest Cape Circuit, uh, the Arthur's Traverse, and uh, Federation Peaks been one of those goals for mine for, for a long time, and I've climbed it twice, been there four times, only been able to do it twice. Um, Walls of Jerusalem, which was a gateway to the central plateau of Tasmania. Fresno National Park, Mariah Mar Mar Island National Park. In Northern Territory, there's a wonderful trail called the Larry Pinter Trail. Um, it's near Alice Springs, and I've walked that end to end. It's about 233 kilometres um, from Alice Springs to Mount Sonda, and in the reverse direction. Um, New South Wales, of course, there's lots to see in the Blue Mountains, Butterwangs National Park, in, in the New England National Parks area. Victoria, the Great Southwest Walk, which is, um, begins and ends at Portland and Victoria. And then if people are aware of the Great Ocean Road, there's an also a, a hike that parallels it called the Great Ocean Walk. Uh, there's lots to see in the Grampians, which I've been at most recently uh, this, year, this year, and also um, in Western Australia, the Bilberman Track, which is a 997 kilometre um, trail from Perth to Albany. Um, Overseas, okay, because it just can't stop in Australia. Um, New Zealand, Abel Tasman Circuit, Stewart Island, which is the third largest island in New Zealand, you can walk around it. Um, Narahoe Circuit, which is um, around the um, volcanic area in the central of the North Island and the Milford Trail. And then back to Germany to walk the um, Westweg, which is a trail that walks, that starts at Fort Same, where I used to live, and, and you can follow it for 200 kilometres and end up at Basel, um, or Basel in Switzerland. The Via Piana Yellow Trail in Italy, um, starts in Italy and it ends in Germany, and the Stubaya High Trail near Innsbruck, and also from Innsbruck to Zugspitze, which is Germany's highest mountain. So it's hard to put in words what these experiences teach us. Um, I certainly feel that I've had a, 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 not many people know this about me, but I've had a lifelong struggle against um, mental illness, um, um, diagnosed with OCD, um, and I found that to get to the other side, this um, setting of goals, achieving them, and, and the euphoria that experience really has helped me um, manage the condition and um, um, come through the other side and, and appreciate what life has to offer. So that there is a picture of the Lara Pinta Trail, um, somewhere between Alice Springs and Mount Sonda in the West McDonnell Ranges. There's a view of the Southwest Cape Circuit in Tasmania. Um, this is along the trail in the uh, Black Forest um, of the Westveg. And what uh, this eventually led to is the passion that I had for teaching. I wanted it to extend to the qualities that I'd learnt from taking these hikes on board. Um, and, and so we started to take groups of young people and this is a group from St. Peter's in about 2011. Um, we started to take them to the trails that 
that we were very familiar with. So we took a group out to Southwest National Park in Tasmania. Um, we chartered a plane to land in a small um, landing strip they have there that used to be a tin mining area called Malaluka. And from there we hiked eight days to across the bottom coastline of Tasmania on the, what they call the South Coast Track to Cockle Creek. And um, this is a picture climbing the hardest section of that trail called the Ironbound Range. Um, it's the longest day and everyone is still in good spirits. Um, what I found is that when it came back to the classroom, the students that came on these Duke of Edinburgh adventurous journeys with us uh, did maintain these qualities of resilience and determination and I found a correlation between students that took physics actually and those that did these hikes. And so here is a um, picture of um, perhaps my last school at Girraween National Park in a place called uh, the Valley of the Winds. And what the girls do is, or what the groups do, but I'm saying girls because it's been a number of girls, uh, trips with girls in the last few years, is they climb down this gorge, which involves a lot of rock scrambling, and it's a great achievement for them. And then we go and sit down and appreciate what's around us for, a few, for about an hour. And that's Mount Barney. It's another um, local area where I would regularly take um, groups of students um, with, at Somerville House, probably go there about, climb the mountain about once a year, but we'd certainly go back to Mount Barney National Park about three or four times a year. I couldn't do it without um, my colleague, Dr. Gemma Dale, who um, has, this, has very similar um, views on the benefits of outdoor education and the impact it has on resilience and determination in the classroom as well. The biggest um, challenges I took on board was a 72-day hike in the Alps called the Via Pino Yellow Trail, and what we did is we extended it from there to hike around Innsbruck um, and learn along the way the art of doing what's called the Klettersteig, so, or Via Ferrata in Italian. So the first couple of pictures here of the Brenta Dolomite region, and to get around in these places, we had to teach ourselves how to use Via Ferrata kits, which is what you see here. So you'd wear a rock climbing harness, and those of us who do this, we're not rock climbers, by the way. It's just the idea that you set a challenge and you go out, you learn what you need to do, and then you go ahead and, and do it. So basically, in a rock climbing harness, you have a, a loop out the front. This threads through the loop, and your um, carabines thread through that, and then basically this is connected to you. And so you use wire cables like you can see here. Um, and when we got to the main Austrian Alps, probably can't see it here, but just as a, a particular view that all along this way through the Alps, it's, it's quite precarious. You're probably climbing about 1,500 metres a day. You see some beautiful um, creatures along the way. And as you can see there, you've got these massive ladders that scale 50 metres or more up and down cliffs. But this picture here um, demonstrates the use of the um, Via Ferrata. So you can see in each of them there's a cable. At all times for safety, you have to be uh, clipped in with, um, over the cable with one, one of the carabiners of the Via Ferrata kit. And generally what you do is you, you clip in, um, ahead of you, you climb up a bit, and then you unclip and you clip in above that. And that way you make your way up and over these ancient, um, I will say ancient there. In the First World War, a lot of these were developed um, by the Italian army to um, am ambush the Austrian army, um, who might have been on the other side of the mountains. Um, and so they're still here today for, for, for people to use and they're regularly maintained. Uh, along the way, we stay in refugios, which means that we can travel light, um, just, ca just carrying um, what we need for, for, for bad weather, and um, they, have, they have beds and meals in these places, so it, it just makes the uh, travelling 72 days in the area much, much, much more of an easier experience. 
Um, I managed to climb 92 peaks in the Alps over those 72 days. It wasn't the goal that I set out, but it be certainly became an obsession after a while. And when I came back to Australia uh, after 2017, I just wanted to maintain that spirit of determination and I took to running. And running isn't something that was natural to me at the time. I never saw myself as being able to uh, run a marathon, let alone enter the Boston Marathon, which requires a qualifying time. From, the, from my age, it was about um, three hours and, and 20 minutes. And um, in 1919, I reached that goal of, of running the Boston Marathon. Having reached that goal, I decided that the goal was to run 100 marathons. And currently, I'm about a week away from running my 40th marathon. And all of this since I turned 50 years old. So I'm just trying to say, from, from an old fellow's perspective, this is a, a goal that's achievable. Um, for, for a lot, for, for most of our lives. So I'll leave with this particular picture here um, of, of one of the Duke of Edinburgh groups that we took. This is on Mount Maroon looking across to Mount Barney. And this solid, very convinced that by taking groups of young people to enjoy some of the adventures that I have over my lifetime, that I'm able to pass on this spirit of determination and if we could have more girls taking on board some of these adventurous journeys, um, multi-day hikes um, in the Australian bush. I'm actually convinced it could be one of the ways that we can beat the cultural um, influences that are stopping girls from choosing STEM and um, physics in particular. Thank you.